good morning. Good morning. 20 years or so ago, I led an adult mission trip to Belize. Uh, we went to a little tiny island. Uh, it was part of Belize, but you couldn't even see mainland Belize. Uh, a little island called Key Calker. A hurricane had come by and just completely devastated it, and the Episcopal Church was uh, rebuilding some of the infrastructure on this island, including um, the Episcopal Church on the island. And, um, you know, mission trip to the Caribbean, not so bad, right? Not so bad. It was, it was good. It was wonderful. It was a great week, and it was hot. It was hot working. And so one of the days, we worked all day, mostly uh, laying concrete blocks, and then we had made an agreement with a, uh, a local guy who had a boat to take us out and show us some of the other islands and, and some of the sites. So we finished our work, we got on the boat, we went out, um, we were way out, you couldn't see anything for a while, just uh, wide open sea, we saw dolphins, we went over to a mangrove swamp, we saw manatee, it was amazing. It was a great day, and then the sun starts to set, it's time to go home. We had stopped to look at the manatee, so the engine was off, and then it was time to go. He went to fire up the engine. It didn't go. Nothing. And uh, that was exciting. So <laughs> uh, he keeps trying, he works, he pulls the cover off the engine, starts digging into it. This is just a simple boat. It was a metal boat. There were like 15 of us on it. It was open. There's no cabin. There's no like even padded seats. It was just an open boat. And uh, a thunderstorm, you could see it rolling in as the sun is setting and we're in a metal boat on the ocean. And so this is like, and I'm in charge, right? <laughs> But I can't do anything. I can't fix a, uh, uh, an engine. He's working, he's working, he's working. Finally, he gets the thing going. It's pitch black. And remember, simple boat. It doesn't have like big floodlights or any of that. It's just a simple boat. He floors it, and we go off into the night. It's just black in every direction except for the flashes of lightning in the distance. And we are cruising. Have you ever been on a boat going pretty fast? Like we're just like skipping across the water. And it was so scary. We were going so fast and there were no lights. And I'm thinking, what if we hit a sandbar? What if like, oh my goodness. But the guy kept trying to calm us down. He was like, I, you know, I grew up here. Like I know this place. This is my boat. I've grown up going past. And you're like, like, okay, he knows what he's doing. We're in his neighborhood. We're uh, in his comfort zone. And so I, like, I could academically, mentally figure out that, yes, we're probably going to be okay. But, like, here, I was not so sure, right? I was, I'm white-knuckling it uh, the whole way. Uh, at the 5 o'clock service last night, uh, after the service, someone asked me, did you make it? <laughs> we made it. And, uh, and you know, I, I, whenever we had the story of Jesus calming the storm at sea, I always think of going uh, into the black of night. There, faith in the New Testament, uh, Greek, the word is pistis or pisteos, and uh, it means faith, and it's, it certainly means faith with the mind, like believing. But it also means trust. So we can believe in these things, but we can also have trust in these things. Trust in God, trust in Jesus, trust in the acts that we're going to be talking about today, and uh, through the rest of, rest of the week until next Sunday. Uh, there's the faith that, that can be like, okay, I can maybe understand this, I can think about this, yes, I believe this happened, but there's also a sense of trust. If you've ever 
had to, you were a Boy Scout, a Girl Scout, a school trip, a corporate a bonding experience. You ever had to do a trust fall, right? Where you stand there on the little tree stump and you fall backwards into your friends, your colleagues who are there going to hold their hands out. You know, again, mentally you can be like, yes, okay, I get that they're not going to let me fall and hit the ground, right? But you have to sort of overcome this. There are also times in life where we can, our gut tells us that something, we have trust, where, but we can't explain it. Things, two things go together, and they go together in the New Testament as well. The epistle lesson today from Paul's letter to the Philippians is the lesson we read every Palm Sunday. Every Palm Sunday we get this little fragment of what we think is an ancient hymn that the first Christians would have known. It's a hymn about Jesus, about Christ, um, and about his sacrifice, and it's about his sacrifice on the cross, but it's also about his sacrifice in coming to us. The hymn goes, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, for who though he was in the form of God, he was God, he did not regard equality with God, all the power of God and the glory of God as something to be exploited, and so he emptied himself, taking on the form of a slave being born in human likeness, being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, death on the cross. It's, it's a hymn which celebrates Christ's humility, Christ's willingness to divest himself of everything, to come here, to live here, and to die. Right before this lesson, uh, those are verses 5 through 11. Verses 1 through 4 are this. Paul says, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation in love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, in other words, if there's anything good coming out of our faith whatsoever, anything positive, make my joy complete. And then he speaks directly to the Philippian Christians and to us, saying, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Again, you know, he will end this, he'll follow this with the hymn about the humility and the willingness of God, Jesus, to divest himself of everything. But he precedes it with also an explanation of how Jesus is willing to look not to his own interests, but to the interests of others. Uh, in full humility. Uh, did nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. He describes the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus in just a few verses. And the hymns there that, that connects what goes before with the hymn that follows after is, let the same mind be in you. Whatever frame of mind that allowed Jesus to divest himself fully of everything, of all status, power, and glory to come among us. Whatever it was within Jesus that gave him the strength to climb onto the cross and die not for his own gain but for ours, let the same mind be in you. We are uh, beginning today this thing called Holy Week. Holy. Anybody know what holy means? What was that? Blessing? Sort of. Sort of. It's related. It, it literally means set apart. We, when we bless something, we set apart. When you have a holy vessel or a holy table, it's not just something that we like have like dinner on. It's something that is set apart for God. 
Uh, you have a holy place, a, a church. It, this isn't just a bar. This is a holy place for the people of God to come together uh, and to connect with God. Being holy is set apart. Holy week, then, is a week that Christians have set apart since the mid-fourth century to recall, to remember the saving acts of Jesus. Today, obviously, Palm Sunday, we are remembering Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem as the crowds were shouting Hosanna and waving their palm branches. On Thursday, we'll come back here, and we will remember Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. Uh, We'll remember him getting up from table and washing his disciples' feet. We'll remember Jesus giving the disciples a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. We'll remember Judas' betrayal, Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, and his arrest. We'll remember him being mocked and beaten. On Friday, when we gather here, we'll remember his trial before Pontius Pilate and before Herod. We'll remember him being whipped after being tied to a post. We'll remember him being mocked, having a crown of thorns laid on his head, being forced to carry his cross through the streets of Jerusalem, being nailed to that cross, dying on that cross, and then his corpse being removed from that cross and being laid into a tomb. We're going to remember all of that. But not just as an exercise in history. Not just so we can go, oh, it's really interesting that those things happened all that long ago. That's, that's really cool to know that. I mean, there is history there. Uh, if you turn on the Discovery Channel or the History Channel this week, you will be inundated with their list of spiritual programming talking about uh, Jesus and the disciples and Mary Magdalene, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, some of that's interesting, but that's not what Holy Week is about. The, the proper response to remembering and recalling the sacrificial life and death of Jesus is faith to either come to faith. You're like, oh, okay, this is something I've heard about for a long time, but now I'm going to actually bring it into my life or deepen our faith. If you've been a Christian for decades and decades, it's a time once a year to recommit and grow deeper and deeper. But again, remember, it's it's faith, not just up here. Yes, it's up here. Yes, we can seek to understand it. Yes, we can believe it, but it's also faith that happens here. It's trust. Trusting not just that it happened, but trusting that Jesus' way of living is a way for us to live. Trusting that Jesus' way of dying is something worthy to graft into our life. What Paul calls Letting the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. We do this each year so that we could do that. So that we would not just believe in Jesus in our heads, but every step we take and every breath we take and every moment we live, we would live deeper into Jesus' humility, Jesus' willingness to put others before himself. Jesus' willingness to uh, live in obedience to God. Part of what we do this week is trust that that is a good way to live and then to do it. The last words of the Gospel lesson are some of my favorite in the Gospel uh, where the Pharisees try and tell Jesus to shut the crowds up and all of their all of their singing and all of their shouting and all of their uh, praising the disciples the Pharisees are like make them be quiet and Jesus says if they were quiet quiet it wouldn't matter because the stones would start to sing 
And I love that. Like, I, I can get like goosebumps from that. But I think part of what Paul is asking of us in the second chapter of Philippians, and I think part of what Holy Week did just do is as thrilling as those words are as to not make the same thing. We do that. Let the same mind be in you, 